Hi, welcome to Operation Fishing Freedom. I'm Ben Olson. Today, we're privileged to be sharing the boat with retired U.S. Army Green Beret, Greg Stubbe. Duty, honor, sacrifice. Every military veteran has a story to tell. Join pro anglers Jay Garstecki and Ben Olson as they honor the stories of true American heroes on a fishing boat. The mission today is Operation Fishing Freedom. Brought to you by Great Clips. Autumn in Wisconsin, where the air is crisp and the lakes turn cool. You see, fall is a season of change. And for the men and women in our military, change is something that is virtually guaranteed. So where'd you grow up, Greg? Well, that hasn't occurred yet, uh, but, <laughs> but I think my most formative years were in Tennessee. My dad was in the Navy, so I moved around a lot. Did you fish when you were a kid? That's all I did. My dad, uh, he believed in living pretty far away from the Navy base, and uh, so he had a garden, and, and, and we raised livestock, and it was a rural life in West Tennessee. And, uh, I'd have to weed the garden and, and shovel out the chicken coop and, and all these things. And my reward was to be able to go behind the house and fish in the pond. So there wasn't an allowance, there wasn't money to be had, but, but if I worked well enough, he'd leave me the last couple hours of daylight and I'd go fish. And nothing's been the same since. <laughs> so tell me about the start of your military career. Well, I, I joined the Army in 1988, uh, in October of that year. And, I think my dad thought if I was going to join the military, I should go in the Navy like he did. Um, but after a couple of years, uh, I became eligible for sergeant. And then at that point, I was also eligible to try out for the Special Forces. Was Special Forces something you always thought about? I honestly, I wasn't thinking that big. I didn't think that that was something I could actually achieve. Going through the Special Forces program, I was selected as a medic, and I was selected to learn Russian language. Uh, that was challenging. The medical stuff was just as, just as tough. It felt like I was drinking through a fire hose trying to learn that much quickly. Surgery, anesthesia, trauma management, veterinary medicine, dentistry. You have to, you have to perform these skills where there is no doctor. And then when the moment comes and you found out you made it, you realize that's not the moment at which you arrive. That's the moment it just starts to get difficult because there won't be any excuses after that. Harder than, than earning the Green Beret was wearing it because now I had to live up to it. And, and until that moment, when I, when I put that Green Beret on my head, all of a sudden, everybody looked at me different. And it wouldn't stop the sun, it wouldn't keep my head dry, and it sure wouldn't stop a bullet. It was just a hat after all that, and, and there was nowhere to hide. So I couldn't just be a normal person after that. Everyone expected me to be the one to save the day, and it didn't matter if I was having a bad day. I still had to be that guy, and that's, that's a big responsibility to live up to for a young guy. So how old were you when you were awarded the Green Beret? I, I think I was about 24, and, and, and that was below average. Uh, guys that went into Special Forces normally were a little more seasoned, a little older, uh, a little more maturity than I had, to be honest. And uh, most of the guys were over 30, and so I had a steep learning curve. And when I showed up there, I was very young, still had Simulac on my breath. I had no business uh, with these grown professional men who were there to do a very serious job. It was hard, because I, I thought I'm a Green Beret now and I should automatically get everybody's respect. But now I'm dealing with people that, that have a job, a career, that means overcoming their fear of death just for training each day, much less going into conflict areas of the world. And so they were very serious and I wasn't. I still wanted to play and uh, I hadn't gotten the memo yet. And, uh, and my team sergeant had a hard talk with me and, and he told me, you're not mature enough to be here. 
Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by Great Clips, Recon Boats, and by Evan Root Outboards. We at Operation Fishing Freedom are able to share and preserve these veteran stories thanks to our great sponsors. They rely on our YouTube subscriptions. That's where you come in. Please go to YouTube, search Operation Fishing Freedom, and click that subscribe button. Operation Fishing Freedom Foundation is also a nonprofit organization. And while we rely heavily on our sponsors, it's the donations from viewers like you that really make a difference. Log on to our website, operationfishingfreedom.com, and click on the donate button. Your donations are tax deductible and no donations too small. What's the difference between good and great? Good tries to get it right every time. Great actually does. With Clip Notes, we save your haircut details so you always get exactly the look you want. Great Clips, it's gonna be great. What's the difference between good and great? Good is when your haircut costs less. Great is when it still meets high standards. At Great Clips, you'll always get the haircut you want for less. And with our easy online check-in app, you'll save time too. Great Clips, it's gonna be great. Recon. Mother Nature's fury is no match for the new Recon 2185. Setting a new standard for deep V big water fishing, the 2185 features a heavy-duty transom specifically designed to accommodate today's high-powered outboards with ample room for a kicker on either side. The 2185 boasts a superior interior with an incredible cargo capacity and the industry's best rod storage, having the capability of holding up to 21 rods over 10 feet long. The new Recon 2185, built by craftsmen, built for fishermen. To demonstrate the uncompromising performance of Evan Rood, we took to the water. Here's what real boaters had to say. At Twin 300, it was just incredible. The acceleration, the torque, it was just effortless to drive. It was smooth, it was powerful, it turned so responsibly. The iDock was really cool to try. I was really impressed with how easy you were able to come into the dock. Doing the head-to-head, -head, fuel consumption, oil consumption, hands down, the E-Tech had it. Operation Fishing Freedom Foundation is a nonprofit dedicated to documenting the lives of our military veterans. And your donations allow us to provide education and treatment to our veterans. Log on to our website, operationfishingfreedom.com, and click on the donate button. After a long and arduous process, Greg Stubbe was only 24 years old when he was awarded the Green Beret. Yeah, he's just dialed now. But lacking the maturity of his peers. That's a little bit righter. Greg quickly learned he needed to earn the respect of the men he was serving alongside. He gave a good fight, I'll tell you. When he ran, I thought it was about three pounds. <laughs> So being the youngest among all these special forces guys, what was that like? Honestly, I don't think it was because I was young. I think it's because I wasn't as mature as my peers. And, and, and I remember being told that, and it was hard. It was hard. And my team sergeant had a hard talk with me, and, and he told me, you're not mature enough to be here. And he told me in the middle of the day, he said, why don't you just go back to the barracks because you're not much good to us anyway. That hurt. I didn't want to hear that. I already knew everything. I was a Green Beret now. Nobody could say that to me. But when this guy said it, someone that until that moment, he was the biggest thing I'd ever witnessed. He was amazing. And later he asked me, he said, why are you here? Why do you want to be a Green Beret? And uh, I don't think I had an answer. He saw me hesitating. 
He said, well, you're gonna need to know if you're gonna be able to do this job. And he handed me a note and I'll never forget it. I still have it on a little yellow piece of paper. He said, this is why I wanted to be a Green Beret. Now you need to come up with your reason. He handed me a piece of paper. It says, I never wanted to grow old or die young knowing that other men did the hard work and I stepped aside to let them do it. <laughs> it, it added the weight to my shoulders and it, and it increased the, my own comprehension of the responsibility I had to face in order to do what those guys were counting on me to do. So being 24 when I got to my first A-team, um, the challenges were great, and I went through years at 10th Special Forces Group learning the ropes and trying to earn my stripes and, and going through conflict areas, uh, living through tragedies, the loss. Uh, it brought me to a position where I had the, the experience to become an, uh, an instructor for the Special Forces, and I was selected to go and teach at Fort Bragg uh, for candidates in the Green Beret program. So how long before you were actually deployed then? It took a couple years because uh, I had to spend my tenure as an instructor first. And then uh, by, the time, by the time I got the chance to go into the war on terror, um, I was angry because I'd lost friends, I'd lost students. People I loved were gone now because of what happened over there. And, by the time I finished my instructor tour and got to Afghanistan, everything happened really fast. And it didn't play out the way I thought it would. Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by Great Clips, Yance Valor Foundation, and by St. Croix Rods. Cookie cutters. Oh, big job. <laughs> Look, it's just like a bass, only smaller. <laughs> if you'd like to see more behind the scenes footage and bonus content, follow us on social media and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. What's the difference between good and great? Good treats you like a customer. Great treats you like a friend. From saving your haircut details and clip notes to saving you time with online check-in, Great Clips makes your life easier, just like a great friend should. Great Clips, it's gonna be great. What's the difference between good and great? Good tries to get it right every time. Great actually does. With clip notes, we save your haircut details so you always get exactly the look you want. Great Clips, it's gonna be great. Nobody wants to run out of power when they're on the water. There is a better way. Introducing the Charge Marine Power Management Station from PowerPole that does the work of three devices, a traditional battery charger, a charge on the run, and an emergency start system. PowerPole Charge. Recon. Mother Nature's Fury is no match for the new Recon 2185. Setting a new standard for deep V big water fishing, the 2185 features a heavy duty transom specifically designed to accommodate today's high powered outboards with ample room for a kicker on either side. The 2185 boasts a superior interior with an incredible cargo capacity and the industry's best rod storage, having the capability of holding up to 21 rods over 10 feet long. The new Recon 2185, built by craftsmen, built for fishermen. To demonstrate the uncompromising performance of Evan Rood, we took to the water. Here's what real boaters had to say. At Twin 300, it was just incredible. The acceleration, the torque, it was just effortless to drive. It was smooth, it was powerful, it turned so responsively. The iDock was really cool to try. I was really impressed with how easy you were able to come into the dock. Doing the head-to-head, -head, fuel consumption, oil consumption, hands down, the E-Tech had it. Our military has sacrificed for our freedom. It's up to us to enjoy it. So get out there and enjoy the open water, the freedom of nature, the freedom to fish, 
and of course, the freedom to celebrate. We at TH Marine want to say thank you. As a family-owned business, we take pride in serving our veterans from transom to trolling motor since 1975. If you're a U.S. military veteran living in Illinois, Wisconsin, or Minnesota, log on to takeavetfishing.org to find an event near you. Produced in association with the Yance Valor Foundation. For Green Beret Greg Stubbe, life was about to change. But I was an instructor. I wasn't fighting. And even students that I was training, they got there before I did and some of them were killed. So it was one of the most frustrating points in my career to be a war fighter, but not fighting the war. By the time I finished my instructor tour and got to Afghanistan, everything happened really fast. By now, I had become the older guy on the team. I had almost a full career behind me. This would have been my last deployment. I would have begun to retire when I got home from this. But I was walking out of the mess hall one day, and uh, these three students of mine from the Q course, the, the Special Forces Qualification course, they, they ran to me and said, Sarge, Sarge, you got to come on this mission. Uh, we're going on this mission, and it's a big deal. We need a senior medic. Can you go? And I'd promised my family I wouldn't volunteer for anything. But after you teach guys what's going to be expected of them, and you stand on a podium, or you follow them through the woods, preaching at them what the right thing to do is, I couldn't tell them no. <laughs> so I volunteered, and I went on that mission. Uh, it was called Operation Medusa, and it was a, it was a huge NATO involvement. Uh, but we ran, into, we ran into Taliban that were kind of dug in. We wound up surrounded by over a thousand Taliban, and that fight went on for more than 10 days. You and 30 men were surrounded by more than a thousand Taliban. Yeah. Not just men, Green Beret, 30 Green Berets. Right. And ran out of ammo uh, several times, and that's not a good feeling, let me tell you. So you were wounded in Operation Medusa? Yeah, on the, on the fifth day of fighting, um, we were moving to a position to support teammates that were pinned down. I was supposed to get up to the top of the hill and, and shoot over our guys' heads to, to hold the enemy back and allow their withdrawal to a safer place. But someone uh, with a cell phone detonated an IED as my driver and I went past it. All of a sudden, I couldn't see or hear anything. I just felt intense heat and pain. And, uh, and it was all the way through me like I was in a microwave oven or something. I was boiling on the insides. And when I, when I could first see anything at all, I wasn't in the turret of the Humvee anymore, manning the 50 caliber machine gun. I was trapped in a vehicle that was incinerating. My foot and ankle were blown off uh, in the blast. Uh, they were still connected, still attached by some flesh and tissue. Um, but the bones below my knee cut through my pants leg and stuck in the sand when I was trying to crawl. And then I could smell my flesh burning, but I, and it hurt worse than anything I've ever known, but I couldn't put the fire out. So when the guys got to you, did they have the training to save your life? Well, they did very well. We had a couple guys that got burned themselves because they wouldn't quit trying to put the fire out on me. And they didn't have anything else to do it with, so they smothered it with themselves. That, that's humbling. You find, out, um, you find out that people love you. This week's Nonprofit of the Week, Clear Path for Veterans New England. Clear Path for Veterans makes a lifetime commitment to military service members, veterans, and their families. We support the journey home. What's the difference between good and great? Good is when your haircut costs less. Great is when it still meets high standards. At Great Clips, you'll always get the haircut you want for less. And with our easy online check-in app, you'll save time, too. Great Clips. It's going to be great. What's the difference between good and great? 
Good treats you like a customer. Great treats you like a friend. From saving your haircut details and clip notes to saving you time with online check-in, Great Clips makes your life easier, just like a great friend should. Great Clips, it's gonna be great. If you're a U.S. military veteran looking for the fishing experience of a lifetime, nice fish. join me, Jay Garstecki, and the Operation Fishing Freedom team as we travel to Temple Bay Lodge on beautiful Eagle Lake in Ontario, Canada. Oh, monstrous one. Oh, baby. The dates are September 5th through the 12th, 2020. If you'd like more information, log on to our website, operationfishingfreedom.com, and click on the Take Me to Canada button. J-Dog Junk Removal and Hauling. It's a national junk removal company that franchises exclusively to vets. The Jeep turned into a Hummer, the Hummer turned into a rat, the rat turned into a dog. Before you know it, I'm going to the VA hospital and I'm, I'm hiring veterans. And I'm like, man, this feels really good. It's respect, integrity, and trust. And when you have a veteran that you know their work ethic, you know what they've been trained to do, you put them in our system, it's, it's a perfect match. So the goal for us is get the unemployment rate under 1% for veterans. We're on our way. Our military has sacrificed for our freedom. It's up to us to enjoy it. So get out there and enjoy the open water, the freedom of nature, the freedom to fish, and of course, the freedom to celebrate. We at TH Marine want to say thank you. As a family-owned business, we take pride in serving our veterans from transom to trolling motor since 1975. If you'd like to personally thank a veteran that you saw in one of our episodes, or nominate a veteran to be featured on a future episode, log on to our website, operationfishingfreedom.com. Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by ARE Accessories, Optima Batteries, and by TH Marine. Tell me what that was like when you realized what was going on. Did you know how badly you were injured? I, honestly, I felt like I was going to die. Uh, I didn't. I had seen wounds like that on other people, but they were already dead, and uh, I knew it was serious. And I was losing my ability to breathe well. I knew I was losing blood at an alarming rate, um, and I didn't know yet, but shrapnel had gone through my intestines, uh, and I wound up seeing parts of my body that had never been exposed before. You find out that people love you <laughs> in those situations, and you find out that, that sometimes somebody you don't think a lot of, it's just because you didn't know them. And then the one you think you don't like is going to be the one that saves your butt. And in fact, there was a student that I didn't like at all. and, and and I was responsible as an instructor for failing him from the Q course earlier. He had gone through again, made it, and that was the guy that showed up to save me. I had no trouble failing him because I, I didn't even like him. But he went back through the program. <laughs> all that again, suffered through all that bad stuff to, to somehow make it and become what I was even better, in fact, and that's who showed up on the battlefield to save my life that day. It was Riley Stevens that saved me. All I could say to him when I saw him was, no hard feelings, right? More proof of my low character, <laughs> because it was a selfish motivation, even in a moment like that. When he, when he got to me, he was as surprised as I was, and his eyes were big around. He was. He was afraid that he wouldn't be able to save me. I could see fear in his face. I was in bad shape, and, uh, and he wanted so much to save my life. And, and later, um, 
months went by and, and we got to talk and see each other in person. Uh, and I found out that part of his anxiety was wanting to prove to me that he could cut the mustard now, that he could make the grade, that he knew how to be a good medic and he was gonna show Sergeant Stubby. Boy, did he. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he saved my life and I love me some Riley Stevens now. <laughs> He's awesome, this is the hero that saved my life. But, but the reality is sobering that nothing changed about him. He always had that greatness in him. The only thing that changed was, was my ability to see the greatness in him. But figure the odds on that, that it would be somebody like that that, that was coming to save me. And uh, I do believe that the Lord works in mysterious ways and, and I don't think it was an accident because I had more to learn in that situation than anybody. I'll tell you, we got a great support team. We got a great team and it is one, one team and one fight in this country. We're so fortunate and you having me here like this is proof of that, proof of that grateful nation. And what we're doing now is everything freedom ought to be to me. It's everything I ever wanted to do with my own freedom and you don't have to do this. Why, why do you? <laughs> so I'm, I'm just honored, you're, you're proof. This whole operation, Fishing Freedom, is proof of a grateful nation. So I'd do it all again. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you, brother? <laughs> it's okay, man. It's hard. It's hard when you go. It's hard when you don't go. It's hard if you love your country. I get the identity of being a guardian of freedom. I'm just never going to regret that especially seeing what we got here. If I can still fish, it's still worth fighting for. <laughs> As we've talked today, you know, a, a few words come up over and over again, and, and those words are service and team. I, I've heard that over and over from you. And, and on behalf of Operation Fishing Freedom, for your service, to welcome you to our team, we have a little something I'd like to give you if I could. Now, I know oh, you're pretty man. excited about that St. Croix rod. What? So we have here your very own St. Croix rod. This is, says right on there, handcrafted for Greg Stubbe oh. in appreciation of your surface, service and sacrifice. And that's custom built by Angry Bear Rods just for you. He wrote you a little note there. Wow. And then to really get you on our team, that is we have your very own <laughs> You got my name on Greg <laughs> Stubbe, Operation Fishing Freedom Jersey. We'd just like to thank you so much for everything you've done for our country, for coming out today, for sharing your story with us, that is and for awesome. helping us to help veterans everywhere. Thank you, thank you. If you'd like to personally thank a veteran that you saw in one of our episodes, or nominate a veteran to be featured on a future episode, log on to our website, operationfishingfreedom.com.